What is up amigos? Today we are talking about the pressure drag and friction drag of cars. So we're gonna go through their general formation, so how they form, what creates them, the relative magnitudes between the two, and then the effect of the Reynolds number on these two, which is quite an interesting effect. So first of all, the pressure and friction drags. If you haven't looked at our videos on aero fundamentals where we go through each one individually and go through the ideas of them and how they generally form overall, check those out. Otherwise, we'll just go through it briefly here. So let's say we have a regular car. It's gonna be a fairly boxy car, drawn here. So we have one wheel, two wheels, and let's say the free stream velocity is coming in this way. We have a few different types of drags, but pressure and friction drags are the two uh, main ones. There's also um, vortex drag, which we'll go into in another video. But the pressure drag occurs because as the flow goes over the car, it travels up, sometimes we'll get some sort of separation at certain zones. So we'll get separation zones around here. Again, we've covered this in other uh, automotive aerodynamic videos, but we'll also get separation around here in the back. So what this does is it creates low pressure zones. So the pressure is low here and the pressure is low here. Unfortunately, at the front, you have all this air coming and crashing into the front. So here you have air hitting and a lot of it is stagnating, which means that the velocity goes to zero and the pressure goes up dramatically. So that means that we have very high pressure at the front, low pressure at the back. So if you were to integrate the pressure at the front compared to the back, you'll find that there's a massive pressure difference. And we know that force is really just the pressure times the area. So if we have high pressure at the front, low pressure at the back, the force dramatically increases. And this is actually a drag. It's trying to resist the motion. So there should be no relative motion between the two. That's what this drag is trying to do. That's pressure drag. Friction drag, on the other hand, occurs through the flow actually going over the vehicle. So interestingly, the flow that's coming out the front here and hitting the car at the front, <clears throat> because the velocity is zero, there's actually no friction drag occurring theoretically. However, the flow going over the top of the car and that stays attached, there is actually friction drag because if we look at the boundary layer near this wall, we'll see that there is obviously this boundary layer forming and the velocity right near the wall is quite high. So that means that we do have some sort of friction drag. So drag friction drag coefficient here. So that's why these two occur. And the more that the faster this flow is going, the higher the friction drag will be. So for typical cars, what are the relative magnitudes between the two? How much of the total drag is made up of pressure drag? How much is made up of friction drag? And what are the ratios between the two? So generally speaking, the let's say the pressure drag coefficient is approximately nine times that of the friction drag coefficient. So that means that the pressure drag coefficient is usually the most uh, dominant drag co component on a vehicle. So what does the Reynolds number do to this flow? So before we go into it, just pause the video and think about it yourself and then we'll come back to it and we'll go through it. Okay, so I assume you've paused the video. <laughs> let's talk about the effects of the Reynolds number so let's say we have the Reynolds number here and the drag coefficient here, the total drag coefficient. And we'll go into the different components in a second after we've, after we've discussed the total drag. And let's say we have a Reynolds number of um, 5 million, 10 million, 15, 20, and so on. So we have 5 by 10 to the 6, uh, 10 by 10 to the 6, 15 by 10 to the 6, 20 by 10 to the 6. So Initially, we are going to have the drag coefficient is quite high, but as we increase the Reynolds number, it will start to drop and sort of plateau. So why does this occur and what sort of velocities are we looking at? So this plateau region, which occurs about here, this is at a velocity of about 200 kilometers per hour. It depends on the vehicle because on a few factors, first of all, the um, length of the vehicle, but also the geometry. So the reason why this drops is mainly because the pressure drag coefficient drops. Now the friction drag coefficient actually increases typically. So why does this occur? The reason is because as the pressure, as the velocity increases, the Reynolds number increases, so the velocity is increasing, that's what is driving this Reynolds number increase because we're traveling faster. The flow going over the vehicle now has uh, more energy near the, near the um, surface. So instead of the velocity profile looking at it like this, it might look like this. So the flow near the surface is moving even faster. What does this do? Well, it allows the flow to stay attached over corners much better. So instead of the flow separating, it might actually stay attached over this corner here. 
and then coming over here, the wake might be sharper down instead of being in a more bulbous fashion. What this does is it reduces the wake size. If the wake drops, the pressure that drops is not nearly as great. So you might even get a little bit higher pressure or the zone that this low pressure occurs is smaller. So overall, that results in a lower pressure drag. However, because the velocity is faster, the velocity at the wall is faster as well. That means that the skin friction drag increases too. So on the one hand, we have the pressure drag dropping as the velocity increases. On the other hand, we have the friction drag increasing as the velocity increases. The great thing is because the pressure drag is usually about nine times that of the friction drag, the drop in the pressure drag usually overrides the increase in the friction drag, which means that we get an overall drop in the total drag. It reduces. So that's how the Reynolds number affects the drag coefficient and the components of drag, the friction drag and the skin friction, sorry, the pressure drag and the skin friction drags. So let's just recap briefly. We went through the pressure drag and friction drag of a vehicle. The general formations are the pressure drag occurs because the flow goes over the vehicle and at some point there will be flow separation on the rear surfaces of the vehicle and also there will be some sort of flow stagnation at a lot of the upstream um, points. So that means we have high pressure upstream, low pressure downstream. If we integrate across, it means that we have um, a force and that force pushing back. So we're trying to resist the force of the vehicle moving forward compared to the free stream velocity. The friction drag occurs because we have a flow moving over a surface. And the, the higher the velocity is at the wall, the higher the friction drag will be. The relative magnitudes are the friction drag is about one ninth that of the pressure drag, generally speaking. And the effect of the Reynolds number is as we increase the Reynolds number or the velocity, the total drag will reduce. And that's predominantly because we're getting reductions in the pressure drag. The friction drag does actually increase usually. So this increase is overridden by the drop in the pressure drag, which means that the total drag will drop overall. So that's this video done. If you want to get, um, if you're looking for, for example, a textbook to learn more about the aerodynamics of automotive uh, engineering, check out uh, Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. That's actually a really nice textbook that I like myself. I recommend that one, the link in the description for that. And if you want to get better at CFD and theory, for example, check out our courses in the link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.